Carmi de Leon learned to dance with the waves that life has given her. She shared with us her secrets in keeping herself in tune with the unpredictable bit of life. Good morning, Carmi. Thank you for being our guest for today. Good morning, Rebecca. Yeah. Well, well um, we have a show called Self Made, and the uh, purpose of this is to inspire future leaders. So, can you share with us your childhood story? Okay, that was how many years ago, but I can vividly remember. Uh, I am father's favorite, and because I'm the only girl in the family, um, I dreamt of becoming a flight stewardess, a model and a fashion designer all in one. I think basically I'm a pretty happy kid. And um, beauty is always, uh, beauty and dancing has always been part of me. Actually because my father um, disappoint, uh, discouraged me already, so it's disappointing but I had to follow him, so I took up accounting because he wanted me to be like one of um, his cousins you know, uh, in the US, so I pursued accountancy. And with that accountancy, what kind of job you started? That's very interesting. I have been to a lot of companies and I really, I didn't enjoy accounting jobs. Like office job, I stayed there for eight hours straight. I would rather um, see myself talking to so many people, like selling things, selling stuff. That's why I went to sales. I decided that I would be more um, efficient, more successful if I pursue my dreams and my passion. And that's not just like office work, but it's about selling something, selling ideas, selling an innovative solution. So what is your first sales job? Actually, way back, I joined Citibank um, as credit card um, sales person. <laughs> so I knocked from one door to another, selling credit cards. So you cards. go to different offices? Yes, I actually walked along the way, you know, back way back, I didn't have my car. I really had to um, commute and then knock on, you know, from one door to another, going to different buildings and I introduced myself. It's good because I'm carrying Citibank's name, but it was a tough job. That's when I really found out it's, it's sales that I want to do because it's more challenging. You have to be resilient. If you're in sales, you should be ready to take rejection. I had so many rejection. And maybe because I'm so confident, I was able to bounce back. And I always keep it in my mind that um, if there, if um, sales job begins when the customer says no, so my mind should start working when they say no, I will not buy because that's how I should um, convince a client. So I think it's for me because I'm tough. Generally, I'm tough. So generally, you're tough. How can you explain a woman with substance? Because I could see that's you. Yeah. Well, number one, um, you should practice what you preach. If you want to be a woman of substance, you should be able to deliver what you say and you should always be a good example. It's not, a, you know, talk is cheap, but you have to show something. You have to deliver results. And that is also what I want because in sales, it's always sales oriented. You should be able to deliver results. It's not about sales feel or sales talk, so they say, but it's about the results of all the efforts. And now with that, starting as a salesperson, what did you use? What steps did you use to be the vice president in sales now? Okay, I believe it's just my passion for what I'm doing. It's not um, genius, innovative ideas all the time, but it's all about the kind of care for your work. I, under, I try to understand as much as possible all about the business and whatever it takes um, to engage a customer and all the things that I have learned, I should be able to raise it to the management and bridge the gap. I think that's the very best thing. It's about you know encouraging all the other people in the organization to think like a salesperson. Are you a competitive person because uh, for what you're sharing? I compete with my previous accomplishments and I make sure that I outsmart my competitor with my unique talents and uniqueness in general. So what is uniqueness, um, Carmi Dillion Carey? Well, um, aside from beauty <laughs> <laughs> I love and it. confidence, well, um, I think out of the box. Well, of course, other competitors will also think out of the box. Like, they can always say they are passionate with their job. But I think it's more about building relationship. I really enjoy talking to people and it's a genuine interest in other people 
Yeah, with that, how to be an independent woman? All right. I think rule number one is you should know what you should know what you want. Understand yourself and know what you want and pursue your dreams, pursue your goal. And if you know that you have areas for improvement, accept it and try to improve on those things. But definitely hold on to your strengths and make sure that you use it. Like in the case of Healthway, I, as I mentioned, I'm so passionate about dancing. I formed this dance troupe. Now it's our way of promoting good health to everyone. It's so spontaneous, it's so instant that I'm, I'm sure no other competitors can do that. <laughs> so how you compare between life and dancing? Well, yeah, life in general, it's like you're in a, in a show. Every moment is important. You just have to give yourself, just be true to yourself and perform. Do your best as if there are so many people watching you and you cannot go wrong. Wonderful. With this kind of project you're doing, uh, Carmi, how you manage your work and family? Oh, definitely. I'm engaged from Monday to Friday. Um, you cannot disturb me. I'm all into work 100%. But when it comes to family, during weekends, I cook. I cook for my family. Um, starting with a um, healthy, happy, smiley breakfast in bed. And then I also spend time with my kids, like one-on-one -on -one with my daughter, one-on-one -on -one with my youngest son. So that, and of course, one-on-one one -on -one with my husband. <laughs> and, uh, you look so beautiful and I read an article that you are a grandmother. Oh yes, I'm so proud. I'm so proud to be a grandmom. And uh, you know, it's, it's different. It's times too. When I became a mom, I was so happy. But I was even happier to have a grandson. Mm -hmm. So is your, all your dreams uh, for your children finished, like achieved? Well, definitely not yet because, um, well, I have two um, sons who graduated already. One is graduating, one is in college. But I believe I, I'm so satisfied right now because seeing them grow and uh, loving each other, I think the number one um, rule is that they should also develop the same kind of faith and confidence in life. And that is what I'm doing yeah. right now. If there's a special message that you want to, to inspire our future leaders, mm -hmm. what's the best message that you can give, especially the children right now? Oh, okay. Um, I think number one, patience is a virtue. Because I can see people nowadays, the younger generation, they are quite impatient. With the advent of internet um, and the instant things, they want to get things done the shortest possible way. But there's no instant, uh, there, there's no magic, uh, not, not magic, but success comes with hard labor and patience. So they should be willing to sacrifice, be more selfless. Um, instead of being selfish and getting immediate gratification, they should be able to give themselves first. Try to offer yourself first before you get anything in return. I think that's missing, the value of efforts the value of self-sacrifice, and of course, being adaptable. They should be able to adapt to every new situation. Mm -hmm. They cannot easily give up. Thank you, Carmi. Thank you it's also, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Every success has its struggles. Every dream has its trials and tests. Listen to their stories, because if they did it, you can also be self-made.